Hi friends, welcome to my channel, Gale Saigyan. Friends, in today's session, we will discuss about system on chip. System on chip is often called as SOC or SOC. So friends, before going into the video, I request you, if you are watching for the first time, please subscribe to my channel to get all the stuff related to VLSM. So friends, we will see today what is SOC, what are the challenges, in integrating the SOC and actually why we go for SOC. So friends, first of all, before discussing about SOC, I just want to remind uh, what is VLSI. VLSI is very large scale integrated circuit. So VLSI is nothing but an integration of uh, millions and millions of transistors on a single chip, right? So similarly, SOC is an integration of different components on a single chip. So here, instead of, it is a much more larger scale. So here what happens is we have the different components, like we have the different functionalities, like a processor is required for some design and you require a memory and you require some peripherals. So all this, you generally take different, different chips and you have, or you connect them to get the design completed. But here in SOC, all these are integrated into the same chip. So that is SOC. So SOC refers to an integrated circuit. It is also an integrated circuit that incorporates electronic components required for a system or subsystem on a single chip. Whatever the electronic components are required, like it can be a processor, it can be a memory, it can be a peripheral or anything. So all that, these components are integrated into the same chip. And this integrated circuit is called system on chip. Everything is on the chip. Okay. It typically includes processor, memory, input output interfaces, and other functionalities required for the system's operation. So um, the main features of this are like you're having integration. So SOC integrates multiple functionalities that provides sorry that previously require separate chips on the single uh, now it they are all available on a single chip like earlier we used to have a processor at a, no, as a different chip ram as a different chip and uh, peripherals and everything we used to have a, a communication between these all but now in soc the new feature is like that everything is available on the same chip so it reduces the uh, time and uh, it increases the speed of operations and everything that we will discuss in this video. So complexity is associating compasses, diverse component and functionalities offering a mini orchard solution with enhanced performance. The performance is enhanced, but it is a complex design. Customization. SOC can be tailored to specific application, allowing flexibility in the design and optimizations. Apti, uh, SOC can be designed in a as per the requirement, like you can have a processor, you can have the memories, IOs, as per your application, whatever the components you require for your design, that all you can integrate in your SOC. So it can be tailored based on your application. VLSI, as we know, refers to the integration of large number of transistors on a single chip and SOC evolved from this trend only, further integrating entire systems into a single chip. Okay, so to design a system, we require many components like, as I said, processor, memories, input output peripherals, other devices and all timers and all other devices. So all this can be integrated into a single chip. That is nothing but SOC, system on chip. So what is the importance of uh, SOC? It is a mini archerization means it is a small model of the system which we have like our, our computer system it can be or anything the system is everything on the single small chip okay so what is the uh, advantage of this miniaturization it reduces the space it reduces the and enhances the power requirement okay so the power requirement we what we want in today's world the space should be reduced and our device should be on for maximum time the power utilization should be less so all this can be provided by soc performance wise it should provide 
efficient performance and it should provide good functionality. The functionality should also be improved. So all these are possible with SOC. And one more great advantage of SOC is that in the manufacturing process. See, if you are designing a system where you require a microprocessor and uh, memory and other chips, and then you will be integrating all this to complete your design, right? So the time for manufacturing these individual chips is added. And then when they all are uh, integrated at the same time, then you have to check the functionality and then you have to go for the completion of the design. Whereas in SOC, you need to manufacture only a single chip with all these functionalities, okay? So there is only the time for manufacturing of a single chip is there. Next is what are the components actually we can integrate into the SOC or in general we are integrating. So it can be the processor cores, okay, mainly the processor cores, system on chip. So what are the different cores we have there? like the CPUs, executes which can execute the instructions and perform calculations, graphical processor units specialized for rendering graphical content, digital signal process for processing digital signals, right? Then memory subsystems like random access memory RAM stores the data and makes it available for the process to access quickly. Then cache memory, high speed memory storing frequently access data for faster retrieval. So to enhance the performance, we can add some cache memory. We can have some RAM more uh, RAM uh, data, so RAM memory, so that what will happen, the performance of the system is enhanced. Peripheral and interfaces. Universal asynchronous receiver trans transmitter UART is used for serial communication, asynchronous serial communication. And you can have serial peripheral interface for serial uh, synchronous communication, uh, inter-integrated circuit I2C protocols. You can have a USB protocol, all this kind of the peripherals you can add it to your design. Okay and interconnects like bus architecture communication pathway between different components of the chip, okay, bus communications, then network on chip, scalable on chip communication architecture for the multiple cores, sensors and interfaces. Sensors generally we use when we have, when we are using it for the medical or uh, um, like a medical or um, uh, other kind of the real time applications where we are measuring some physical quantities or environmental changes like temperature pressure humidity okay any that kind of the application if you are using uh, in that kind of the design then sensors can also be a part of the soc input output interfaces allow communication with external devices our soc need to communicate with the external devices so that also can be added into the uh, soc so this is all we came to know what is soc and what are the components present in the soc but what are the challenges in integrating all this component into the SOC? So definitely there will be a challenge because you are integrating everything on a single small chip. So the complexity and the scale, as the size is reduced, everything is on the same chip and the complexity is definitely increased. To handle the complexity is a challenging task. Then power management. We have the different components present, okay? like we have the processors, memories and everything which are working and we need to check for the power management, right? So this is again a great task. Then performance optimization. Different uh, devices are working with the different uh, um, frequencies and they have their uh, different criteria, constraints and all that still we want them to perform at their optimum range. So that is again a challenging task. Then verification validation, when we are uh, going for the verification validation, we want all to be accurate. Every function should give a proper output. So checking the verification functionality is again a very big challenge because here the circuit design is very complex. The SOC contains everything, the processor, the uh, memories and everything. So it becomes very difficult to verify and validate the design. Timing closure and signal integrity. Timing closure, timing closure, like uh, we go for the static timing analysis. So here what we want is all the components should work in a proper way because, uh, but here what happens is you have the different components which are working at different frequencies. So you have different domains 
of uh, frequencies like one domain is different one frequency is different another frequency is different but still you don't want any kind of this lack in the design so handling this kind of the situation is again a complex task and it is a real challenge then design for testability integrating the testability um, cases and testability features is again a challenging one heterogeneous integration here we are not saying using the digital signal here we are using digital analog rf all this every kind of the signals are mixed here so handling this kind of the integration is again a challenging task cost and time to market pressure see when you are integrating all this on the same chip and you are manufacturing and it is also based on this specific application if you want for the specific application then the time it requires because a lot of r d is required uh, when you are designing a SOC, it is not general, it is more specific. So, a lot of R&D is required. So, a lot of time is uh, uh, spent on this uh, research and then the market, uh, time, and then it will be manufactured. So, the time it takes to come to the market is also a very important point to be considered when we go for the SOC designs. So, friends, this is all about the SOC or the SOC. I hope this has given you a basic idea about what is SOC and uh, what are the components present in the SOC. In further videos, we will discuss in more detail about the different SOCs. Uh, so for today, I will uh, stop this video here only. So I wish this has given you some idea. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share to my channel.